except here I've specified quantity is the inside wall temperature and the depth should be in inwards of five millimeters in this case. So if I go to the device file, there I have the inside wall temperature here, and I can plot this. And so there you see the wall heat, the wall heating up um, at a depth of, of five millimeters, what that temperature looks like. So that's a nice way to um, get a single measurement if that's all you need. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at are slice files. And slice files are a way to show cut planes. And so what they do is to cut through a plane and display a range of output values. So slice files can be thought of as a two-dimensional slice through the domain. Um, the slice I'm showing here is going to show, so I've specified slice file xb is equal to 2.6, 2.6. That's about the middle of the room. And I've specified the y dimensions as the entire domain and the z dimensions from the bottom to the top, the entire domain. Quantity is temperature. This is the gas phase temperature. Um, we can't do a thermocouple here. That doesn't make sense. Uh, those are point measurements. Uh, but we can get a gas temperature reading. Uh, and so the way we visualize that in smoke view is if this is the front of the uh, domain, my slice file is going to go through 2.6, which is right where those green dots are. And the way to visualize that is to right click, click on load, slice file, temperature, and there you see uh, x equals 2.6. So if I click that from the front to back, top to bottom, I have a slice file showing the uh, values of the gas temperature um, along there, which is a nice way to see uh, different values visualized. So on the right side, I have a color bar from 0 to 1,000. And this range is automatically detected um, from FDS output. So you can see it looping over and over. Uh, if I click on the color bar, I can actually, you'll see a black line there uh, in smoke view. And it actually tells me exactly where that value occurs uh, on the slice file. So nice way to visualize that. Um, so I'm going to unload that. And... Um, so there is a shorthand way actually to represent a plane instead of specifying six numbers I can actually specify only one number and the shorthand way to do this is to use PBX, PBY, or PBZ depending on uh, what plane you want to go through the X, Y, or Z plane so this line here is actually equivalent to the previous line I have said slice file PBX equals 2.6 and that's it and so what this does is draw a slice at x equals 2.6 everywhere uh, for y and z. So the plane is, the slice file is actually shown here and it's duplicated because it's the same thing. So it goes front to back, top to bottom at x equals 2.6. So a nice shorthand way to do that. You can also show uh, PBY and PBZ uh, accordingly. Uh, another cool feature is that you can show slice files. You can actually input them as 3D volumes. And what this does, it, it lets you move the slice around in the 3D space in smoke view. And there's a warning that this can actually create very large output files for slice files. Um, but it is really nice if you're not exactly sure uh, where there might be interesting things happening and you want to cover the entire volume. So. What I've done here is slice file XB, and this looks similar to the first line, except now, instead of this matching 2.6, 2.6, it's 0 to 5.2. So it's all of the X, all of the Y, all of the Z. I've done the entire domain. You can do a subsection of the domain if you like, but I've done the entire domain with a quantity temperature uh, to show uh, the versatility of this. So if I go to slice file temperature, you see a 3D slice option. So if I hit that, now by default, to, um, so we don't get huge output files, this actually only outputs five times during the entire simulation. So um, the first occurrence is at 60, 120, 180, 240, and 300. So if I looked at the slice at 60 seconds, you'll see I have two slices, one in the Z plane and one in the Y plane. I can actually move this move these around kind of the same way I do the grid lines 
um, if I press the G key. So if I press um, the X key that activates the X, and so now I have X, Y, and Z all showing at once. Um, if I hit Y and Z, that will toggle those off. So right now I'm just showing the X, uh, middle X slice. Now if I use the left and right arrows, I can actually move that around and it's showing me the values at 60 seconds uh, throughout the domain. If I press X and then press Y, now I can use the up and down arrow keys uh, to move throughout the domain. And if I press Y to turn that off and Z to turn on that plane, I can use the page up and page down buttons um, to look throughout the domain. This is a really cool way to uh, visualize the entire uh, domain, the quantities in the entire domain. And I don't have to, I'm not locked to one slice. I can move them around, similar to a plot 3D file. Um, and they can be animated. Uh, you can actually increase the frequency uh, that this outputs on the dump line. Um, but it's done like this to save uh, space initially. So again, X, Y, and Z, uh, those all toggle on and off the different uh, planes, and then left, uh, left, right, up, down, and then page up and page down will move the slices around. So those are 3D slice files, pretty neat feature. Um, let's see, we can, we can also look at uh, we can also create animated velocity vectors. Um, so if we put a slice through the doorway, which is PBX equals 4.4, that's the middle of the door. And if I use quantity temperature, at this time I add vectors equal to period true period. That's going to show me, uh, give me the ability to look at vectors through the door. So if I load uh, vector slices, temperature, I see that 4.4. Now I actually see little arrows showing the velocity, the direction of the velocity, and the colors show the scalar quantity, the temperature quantity. So a uh, helpful thing here is if you press A, you can actually uh, cycle through various lengths for the lengths for the arrows, um, and you can see them moving around, stirring around. We have outflow at the top, inflow at the bottom of the doorway. It's a neat way to visualize uh, some of the flow um, that's going on. So if I unload that, and let's see, next we have, you can look at other slice file quantities. There's quite a few to look at. There's heat release rate per unit volume, uh, mixture fraction, and they'll all show uh, a range of, of, quanti of output quantities. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is boundary files. Boundary files are a way to paint all of the solid surfaces, so obstructions, walls, ceilings, etc., with the specified output quantity. And this can be thought of as two-dimensional, sort of as a paint over the entire, um, all of the surfaces in the domain. Notice that in these input lines, there's no coordinates necessary because it's going to paint all surfaces. So here's three quantities, the gauge heat flux, the wall temperature, and the burning rate. And if I right-click and go to load boundary file, I see those three quantities. So if I hit wall temperature, it loads that up and you'll actually see the wall temperature and here's the temperature values on the right color bar and you can see the room heating up, the hot gas layer effects. Um, it's a pretty nice way to see um, all of the solid phase uh, surfaces um, in one shot. So those are boundary files and you can see the full listing in the user guide. Um, another output quantity is isosurface files. And so what this is is a 3D contour or sheet of the specified value in the domain. So on this line I've specified an isosurface quantity of temperature and this line is going to show a 3D contour where the gas phase temperature is equal to 50 and 100 degrees Celsius. You can input more values. I've only put two in and you'll see what that does in a second. Um, but essentially, this shows a 3D contour uh, or sheet of where that temperature occurs in the gas phase. So if I go to load isosurface files, I see temperature is combined at 50 and 100. So if I click this, I see two different sheets. So let me slow that down. So in the beginning here, as the hot layer descends, here we go, about one minute in, you see this purple sheet is showing 
for 50 degrees Celsius and the gray sheet is showing where 100 degrees Celsius is occurring. So it's a nice way to, to view uh, where these values are occurring in three dimensions um, kind of as a sheet uh, where that's occurring. You can look at different um, volume fractions, species in that way and look at uh, spread um, in that way. So the last thing I want to look at are just a few special output quantities. Uh, there are many more uh, but these are some I wanted to highlight. So the first one is um, this outputs to the device file and this is a layer height. So if you're comparing to a zone model or empirical equations where the concept of a, a hot gas layer applies, it can be handy to see um, what the uh, hot gas layer height is at a certain point. So here I've specified the device. I specified x 2.6, those are equal specify y is 2.3, those are equal, and I specified over a height from the floor to the ceiling, 0 to 2.4 meters, the quantity is layer height. And what this does is this is in the middle of the room here, it's going to uh, use numerical integration to approximate a layer height. So if we actually load the 3D smoke soot, right, you can see in, in field models like FTS, there's not a distinct layer height, there's sort of a gradient uh, from the floor to the ceiling, but using Simpson's rule, as you can see in the FDS user guide, there's a way that um, FDS allows us to get an approximate layer height. Um, so if I look at the device.csv file, I see that layer height here, and if I plot that, I can see the layer height over time, so you can see it in about uh, 20 seconds or so, it descends to about one meter um, and then it be, continues to descend uh, throughout time. So it's a nice way to compare to uh, CFAST or um, hand calculations. I also have um, on the next couple of lines in the input file, same X, y, XB input, but I'm using the quantity upper temperature and lower temperature. So I have those upper layer, lower layer here. So if I highlight those and plot, I get out the upper gas layer temperature and lower gas layer temperature. And again, these are not uh, exact values in FDS because there's a gradient in FDS, but using numerical integration, we can get an average gas layer height for the upper layer and the lower layer shown there. And the last couple of things I want to show are the um, Heat fluxes you can show, these are devices, these are point devices, these are located in the middle of the room on the floor, and I'm, I'm showing the radiative, convective, net, and gauge heat fluxes. Uh, you'll notice the IOR is 3, uh, that's because the Z positive direction is up, that's where the floor is facing upwards, um, and if I look at those devices here, they're all in kilowatts per meter squared, but if I plot them, you can see various values, radiative flux, convective, net, and gauge, and you can see the meaning of those in the FDS uh, user guide. So the last thing I want to show is the adiabatic surface temperature. This is nice for uh, interaction with structural models where you maybe want to do better 3D heat transfer instead of 1D heat transfer. Uh, I can specify a point. So this point is, again, on the middle of the front wall, the inside front wall, um, and I've specified the quantity as adiabatic surface temperature um, and the IOR is 2. So here if I look in the device file, the very last output I have is adiabatic temperature and if I plot that, this is going to give me the adiabatic surface temperature of the wall. This could be a steel beam, this could be any sort of solid um, and you can look in the user guide for more details but I could then plug these uh, temperatures as a boundary condition in a 3D uh, structural model that could better model the heat transfer within the uh, solid phase member. So with that, hopefully that was a helpful um, overview of all the different uh, output quantities that are available in smoke view visualization and as well as the output files themselves. Um, you can refer to the uh, FDS user guide. Uh, chapter uh, 14 does a nice job of, of going over these and more quantities. Um, but that should help you to see uh, all the capabilities of FDS and smoke view as far as uh, output from your model.